Hey guys, today we're going to talk about a few of the ways that we increase genetic diversity in all species, including humans. There we go. So if you take a look at some of these pictures, you can see within each species, whether it's corn or tomatoes or big cats, potatoes, um, that all of them have some diversity within their species in coloring or um, number of seeds or strength. So the first type of uh, way that genetic diversity can be increased that we're going to talk about is something called crossing over. And basically crossing over is an exchange between, uh, of genetic information between homologous chromosomes. So here we have homologous chromosomes. Let's say the kind of bluish color here is from the father, the reddish color is from the mother. So inside of humans we have 23 of these, um, 23 from uh, mom and 23 from dad for a total of 46 chromosome, 23 homologous chrom chromosomes. And so what we see happen in prophase one of meiosis, uh, when these are lining up during, um, when they're getting ready to line up during prophase, the part of the chromosomes can actually swap places. And so after this has happened, we have a little mix up here of our arms of chromosomes. And so instead of having on the blue chromosome a capital Y and a capital Z, that switched places with the lowercase y and the lowercase c on the red chromosome. And so now we've mixed up some of our genes. And so, yeah, please. So just remember that these capital letters and these lowercase letters are, are representing alleles. So they're the same genes that are crossing over here, but you might end up in the end with a different shuffle of the alleles. But the genes remain the same. On and so because of crossing over, what we see happen is uh, we have a mix-up uh, between the chromosomes of the different allele combinations, and it helps to increase genetic diversity. It just results in these chromosomes having different alleles of the trait. The important thing to remember is that this is not a mutation. It's really important to remember that this is not a mutation. Uh, we're going to talk about those next. Um, if you'd like to pause our video now, you can do so and watch the crossing over video. We're actually going to watch this in class. You don't need to watch it at home. We'll talk about it and watch it in class. Okay, so another way we can increase genetic diversity is just by simple mutations. So you have to kind of put yourself back in the DNA and protein synthesis unit. Um, changes in the DNA um, are, could change um, what you get out of a gene. And these can be caused by environmental factors like uh, UV light, um, toxic chemicals. Uh, you know, some of these toxic chemicals can be, you know, like cigarette smoking. Um, nuclear radiations, or just sometimes mistakes in um, the way the DNA is interpreted or um, replicated. Uh, a point mutation, remember, up here is where... Um, so, like I was saying, um, we have an example of a point mutation up here where you have at least one uh, nucleotide or nitrogen base that's... Um, that's changed, and you can see a lot of different versions that we've already talked about in class here, um, deletions or insertions or inversions. Um, and it's not, for, the, for this standard, it's not necessarily that you understand exactly how all of these are different, but maybe that all of them can result in a change in genes. And something to, uh, to keep in mind and that is important is a mutation can happen to two different things in your body. It can ha either happen in body cells like in your skin cells or in your uh, red blood cells. Or it can also happen in gametes, like sperm or egg. If a mutation happens in your body cells, we call them somatic cells, it's not going to be passed on to your offspring. But if a mutation occurs in your gametes or your sex cells, sperm or egg, that mutation can be passed on to your offspring. Um, a good example of um, uh, an event causing mutations is um, when uh, the atomic bomb was dropped in Japan. Um, as a result of that, many people in, in the area uh, got cancer years after the atomic bomb went off because that nuclear radiation caused mutations in their body. And, and so the bomb killed a lot of people, obviously, but um, the result of, of mutations uh, from cancer also killed a lot of people kind of from the fallout of, of that event. So then this goes on to talk about translocation and inversion, a couple other types, as we mentioned um, right here, of mutations. So um, the final way we're going to talk about increasing genetic diversity is the shuffling or distributions of chromosomes. And on your notes, they're in black and white. And so if you want to pause the video right now and get out two colors to kind of follow along with the slide, 
um, it's a good idea because here you can see the homologous chromosomes and we're going to see how they can get sorted out in different ways each time meiosis occurs. So um, if you take a look at the beginning position of possibility one, um, through meiosis the chromosomes are going to sort independently. So let's say the blue is dad and the red is mom. In this outcome of meiosis, you get gametes down here, four of them, um, with this particular combination. But the next time meiosis occurs, you can get something like possibility two. We start with the exact same um, homologous chromosomes, but they um, assort independently of each other, and we end up with four different gamete possibilities than what we had originally. And so when you combine genetic recombination with the others we've talked about, you can really, really up the um, genetic diversity in the same individual every time meiosis occurs. A couple other things to keep in mind with genetic recombination is, um, as Mrs. Childers said, this happens every time um, gametes are being made. Um, also, in humans, we have a lot more than just two homologous chromosomes. We actually have 23, but in models that we use, um, we want to simplify things so it's easier to understand. So in this organism, pretend organism, it only has two uh, homologous chromosomes here, so one and two. And so when they're dividing, we can get these different combinations. Obviously, in humans with a lot more chromosomes, the number of different variations is going to be a lot bigger because we have more chromosomes. The gamete here, if this was uh, sperm cells, um, if one of these goes on to fertilize an egg, it's random which one it is. And so we have this huge, vast number of different possibilities of uh, gametes that can be formed. And then it's even, those possibilities are even increased more by what sperm cell goes on to fertilize an egg. It's all random. And so it just increases the amount of genetic diversity and, and um, results in how we all look different. And before we end this really quick, this image is a really good representation again of how uh, parent cells and the uh, produced cells differ from each other. So the outcome in meiosis is you get a cell or a gamete with um, half as many of the original chromosomes from the parent cell. And we call those haploid.